Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox. On my list of the greatest superheroes of all time, Batman holds a special place. He's a character with great depth and an insane rogues gallery. The excellent DC comics featuring him have transcended comics and have been adapted into excellent TV shows and movies. However, I want to look at some of his video games today. While Arkham Asylum and Arkham City are incredible games, and people love the NES titles, the sixth generation of Batman games is often forgotten. Today we're looking at four Batman games that were released on the original Xbox. Please note that the games have to star Batman, so any game like Justice League with multiple starring DC characters outside of the Batman series will not be included today. All footage was captured on original Xbox hardware, and I'd like to thank my YouTube channel members for their support. Now let's glide on in to this list. The first Batman game to be released on the original Xbox was Batman Vengeance, which came out after the PS2 and GameCube releases on December 18th, 2001. This was published and developed by Ubisoft. This game was launched around one month after the Xbox's release, making it one of the earliest Xbox games outside the launch titles. While looking at the visuals in this game, you will likely note that it has an emptier feeling with a lack of detail or NPCs in many areas. However, I appreciate how this game replicates the charms of the Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures, with a highly cartoony visual style and the voice cast returning from the show. You can expect strong voices like Mark Hamill, Tara Strong, and Kevin Conroy as Batman to make sure this game sounds authentic. This all works together to create a genuine version of the Batman animated universe. This third person action game takes place on the many rooftops and locales of Gotham City. You'll fight enemies as you move around and jump from one area to another. You know what to expect if you've played a game of this genre before in the sixth generation. However, some unique features make this game stand out. One such feature is the first person mode which allows you to use different tools from a first person perspective. You can aim with your bat grapple, a fun and well-integrated game element. Another interesting mechanic is handcuffing enemies while on the ground to prevent them from getting up and attacking you again. This adds an extra strategy to the fights and gives the game a Batman-like feel. The combat system is simple and the combos are easy to execute, making the fights manageable. You can even disarm certain enemies by throwing batarangs at them. The game has a lot of one-off minigames and puzzles that bolster the variety, and the stealth mechanics here are well executed. The game takes an episodic approach and pits you against some of the most notorious villains in the Batman series, with the Joker being your primary adversary. Cutscenes are executed perfectly, and the dark backgrounds make the vivid colors in the foreground stand out even more. This game even has a creepy vibe with the shadows decorating the screen. The music is fantastic, but it only appears occasionally, and the game is generally silent, with long stretches of dead silence punctuated by footsteps. Although it has minor flaws, such as stiff jumps and an overly sensitive first-person camera, it's not the worst example of these issues on today's list. Occasionally getting the camera to point at exact grapple points could take a lot of work. I also had issues with misaligned jumps and hit boundaries or fell short of the target resulting in many falls and level restarts. Overall, Batman Vengeance is a well-rounded package that successfully captures the essence of the original cartoons. It does a great job of balancing the dark humor and bleakness that define the animated series, and the appearance of the side characters are a nice nod to the show. The platforming and levels are straightforward but are visually appealing, and the solid fighting mechanics make sure that it's going to be a fun time. Despite its minor flaws, the game is a must-play for Batman fans, and it's a promising first step for Batman on the Xbox platform. The next Batman game is called Batman Dark Tomorrow. It was published and developed by Chemco, but it was one of the few multi-platform games that never had a PS2 release. On March 18th, 2003, it was released on the GameCube and Xbox. 
Unfortunately, Dark Tomorrow is widely considered one of the worst games of the sixth generation due to its rough gameplay. And I agree with this popular opinion as the gameplay can be headache inducing and rough to play. However, the presentation and music are pretty good. The game boasts visually impressive cutscenes with excellent CGI for the time. The character models look good and offer a nice contrast to the animated series inspiration by taking more of a cue from the comic books. However, as soon as you enter the game, you'll be confronted with the abysmal camera. While it's understandable that the game is trying to emulate the fixed camera style of Resident Evil, those cameras were usually in one room with one angle. In contrast here, the camera will jump within three steps, making it feel like you're watching a movie that is full of jump cuts. While a film that's avant-garde might use a lot of jump cuts and it'll look interesting, in a game it just destroys gameplay. The jumps are jarring and can make controlling Batman a nauseating experience. Additionally, the camera movement will cause the controls to flip, making it a huge task to fight enemies, which is already challenging enough. The hits don't ever feel right, and the awkward movement makes taking out enemies with guns brutally difficult. The handcuff mechanic from the last game returns, but enemies get up very quickly after going down. It makes handcuffing giant groups of enemies a miserable process. After playing this game, it's clear there are issues with both camera and the gadgets. One of the game's central features is the bat grapple, which allows you to fly into the air to make jumps. However, the grapple is unrefined and it has weird physics, making it difficult to use. Despite practice, it never feels quite right. In addition, animations like hits and jumps are jagged and end abruptly. Even Batman's run looks terrible, with the same animation repeating over and over. It's a jumpy mess. The game makes you wonder how it was even released. Despite its flaws, it's evident that there was love and care put into this game, as the background details are stunning. However, sometimes you can come across places in the game where the shelves and furniture are filled, but the camera angles are so poor that you can't properly appreciate the detail work. The music is composed by the London Symphony Orchestra and is another highlight and feels huge and bombastic, similar to the Batman score from the Tim Burton films. But all of this is secondary because a game should be playable first, and unfortunately, that's not the case here. I played a game that was awkward and poorly made. It was so bad that my fiance and I couldn't stop laughing while playing it. From a so bad it's good standpoint, it's worth experiencing. However, it's not a fun game if you want to beat it. It's more like a I can't believe this exists kind of game. This game is the reason why property based games have a terrible reputation. I really don't think a Batman game could be any worse than this. Personally, this was a rough one. The next game on the list is Batman Rise of Sin Zhu, a beat-em-up game developed and published by Ubisoft. It was first released on Xbox and PS2 on October 16th, 2003, with a later release on the GBA and GameCube. This game is based off of the New Adventures of Batman animated TV show, and features a selection of characters to play as, including Batgirl, Robin, and Nightwing, each with their own set of moves. This adds a much needed variety to the game as Rise of Sinzu is very simplistic in design. It's a 3D beat em up where you progress through long corridors, rescue people, and battle the bad guys. The game mostly stays the same from beginning to end, so your enjoyment may vary depending on your preferences. The combat mechanics in this game are pretty simple as you're provided with basic combos from the beginning to fight against enemies with. The gameplay involves walking up to and attacking opponents, which works quite well. It is fast paced and as you progress through the levels you can unlock new combos, giving you a sense of progression. You can also pick up objects from around the levels and throw them, a beat em up staple that gives the game a more active feeling in its levels. Each character has a unique feel with some dealing more damage than others and some being faster. I found Robin's speed fun, but Batman was the best playing of the bunch with solid hits and great combos. 
The game features voice work from the original cast of the TV show, and the sound quality is excellent. And the music also adds to the overall experience. The game has a nice cartoony look and a significant improvement from Batman Vengeance, but it still retains the same feeling. However, some on-screen effects can be annoying as they make the game hazy and wavy and hard to see. This happens when an enemy drops a smoke bomb or gas grenade, and it just lasts too long. It happens way more than it should. The game introduces a new villain named Sinzu, which is a nice change, but I don't love him. There are much better villains out there. The story, though, is a lot like the cartoon, so fans of the show will enjoy this. The game also has a challenge mode where you take on hordes of enemies, which adds more variety but is a very simplistic mode. I wouldn't say I love this game, as it's straightforward and a little too simple. However, I do appreciate it because it excels in what it does. It's not a bad game at all, and if you enjoy games where you just walk from point A to point B, use combos, you'll undoubtedly have fun with it. I played it for an hour or two per sitting, but it can be quite tedious after a while. Yet, if you have a co-op player, that will make this a lot more playable. It's a decent game, but for Batman fans in 2003, this was a much better Batman game than Dark Tomorrow. I feel my strength returning. The last Batman game released for Xbox was Batman Begins, which came out on June 15th, 2005 for all major consoles. It was published by EA and Warner Brothers Entertainment, and developed by Eurocom. This game holds a special place in my heart because this is one that I used to own. I had just watched Batman Begins in the theater, and it left a huge impact on me. The movie was a dark and gritty take on a comic book adaptation with fantastic acting and cinematography. Even to this day, it remains an exceptional movie. I recall stumbling upon this game when it had a discount and buying it without hesitation. Upon playing it, I found it to be a lot of fun. Going back to it now, it's still an extremely enjoyable game. It's another example of a movie-based game that surpasses many people's expectations. In this game, you get to follow the storyline of the movie while playing Christian Bale's version of Batman. Most of the cast from the movie returns to voice their respective characters, giving the game the same feel as the movie. The game is also visually outstanding on the Xbox. The graphics are not just crisp, they are immersive, drawing you into the dark ambience of the movie. The Xbox version supports a widescreen aspect ratio and it adds to the cinematic experience. And by original Xbox standards, it's great. I have always loved the widescreen aspect ratio on the Xbox. The game's attention to detail and recreating actors' faces and locales is commendable, further enhancing the experience. As for the gameplay, it's an action game with stealth elements. This means you'll be fighting bad guys while attempting to scare them to weaken them. You can achieve this by hitting pipes or making loud noises that might cause them to drop their weapons out of fear. I do think it's funny that someone would drop their weapon instead of holding it tighter whenever they're scared, but this happens in Batman's world. It makes sense here. There's a surprisingly significant amount of platforming involved in this game where you'll jump from place to place and navigate tight spaces. The gameplay loop of moving from area to area and trying to remove enemies by scaring them is great. It feels like a precursor to the action set pieces in the Arkham games that would later be improved. Surprisingly, the combat feels a lot like the Arkham games as well with the lock-on and free-flow feeling of the combat. The combat is satisfying. I will say though this is one of those movie games that uses movie clips instead of cutscenes to move the plot along, which I always found to be an easy way out instead of just making full cutscenes, but I'm sure there was a rush development to push this game out. And even with that said, this one is highly entertaining and doesn't have any of the glitches or visual problems that you might find in some lesser movie games. It's not groundbreaking, but fun and a great way to explore a great movie. This is my favorite Batman game on the Xbox, and you should check it out if you've never touched it. Let's talk. What are you? You're one of Falcone's men. What's he doing here? And let's go ahead and rank these Batman games from worst to best. Starting from the bottom, we have Dark Tomorrow, which is no surprise, as it's a pretty miserable game, despite having some minor things that I like. 
Next up is Sinzu, a considerable step up from Dark Tomorrow and a well-playing game, albeit very simplistic. Taking the second spot is Vengeance, which despite having some janky platforming, offers an excellent world to dive into with a fun story and interesting combat mechanics. Finally, at the top spot is Batman Begins, a surprisingly enjoyable movie tie-in game with interesting stealth mechanics and an excellent look. Batman Begins is really good, but it has some minor flaws, and so do the other ones. Except for Dark Tomorrow, which I just recommend avoiding altogether. I will say though that any Batman fan can find some fun in these games. The top three all have entertaining qualities and have fun comic book style stories to take part in. But that does wrap it up for today. If you have a favorite Batman game, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, subscribe to keep up with the retro Xbox content. I want to thank my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.